Hi, welcome to this video on bridging the gap between GCSE and A-level maths. Okay, so this is for students that are hoping to start their A-level maths journey. Okay, in A-level maths in this coming September, so September 2022. Okay, at the time of obviously recording and uploading this video. Okay, and it's also beneficial for GCSE students as well. So it may be beneficial for those of you in year 10 going into year 11. Okay, but it's aimed at students that are going to be starting their A-level maths journey. Okay, this coming September or the next September or etc, etc. Okay, as ever guys, please feel free to pause the video. Try and attempt all the questions first and then press play when you're ready. Okay, this is the numbers section. Question number one. Which of the following are integers? Now, integers in maths just means whole numbers. Okay, whole numbers. Okay, so three is a whole number. Okay, minus 2.8, that's a decimal, so it's not an integer. 0 0.4 is a decimal, decimal is not an integer. A fraction, this ends up being 0 0.75, so that's a decimal equivalent. So that, that's not an integer. Okay, that's not an integer. That is because it's a whole number. Okay, whether it's positive or negative, it's still an integer. 202, that's an integer, it's a whole number, and zero, we class that as a whole number. Okay, so the word integer in maths means whole numbers, okay, or whole number. Question number two, which of the following values are rational and which are irrational? So rational mean that they are terminating, that the, the fraction of or the decimal equivalent, it doesn't go on forever. Whereas irrational means it goes on indefinitely, okay? So think of it as rational is a terminating decimal, okay, or a whole number. Whereas irrational is not terminating and it goes on forever. Okay, 4.7, that is rational because it's a terminating decimal. It doesn't go on forever. It is 4.7. Pi, however, is irrational because it's goes on forever okay so i'll put a little i for irrational and i'll circle the rational the square root of eight well the square root of eight guys is actually a third so that's going to be irrational okay because the decimal goes on forever one fifth well the equivalent for that is 0 0.2 so i can just circle that for rational minus seven okay that is rational okay because it's a whole number and it's and it's negative okay although negative doesn't really matter here but i mean it's a whole number okay whether it's positive or negative okay root 16 well the answer to this gives us four four is a whole number therefore it's rational okay 12.452 that is rational it's a terminating decimal so that is rational and 3.1 that is also rational because it's a terminating decimal it doesn't go on forever so just to repeat that guys rational means a whole number or a decimal that is terminating i.e a decimal that ends so that has a finite number of decimal places an irrational number is the opposite it goes on forever it doesn't have a finite number of decimal po um, places, okay? So pi is irrational, root 8 is irrational, okay? And the rest of these are rational because they can be expressed either as whole numbers or as terminating decimals. So the key word here is the word terminating, okay? So it does end at some point, okay? Question number three, evaluate the following using the calculator, giving your answers in the simplest form. So multiplying fractions, all I do is just times the numerators together and the denominators together. Two times three is six, nine times five is 45. Okay. Those of you will recognize that I can simplify this fraction by dividing top and bottom by three. So I get the answer of Two fifteenths. Okay, dividing top and bottom by three. Okay, so that's all multiplying fractions is. I times the top two numbers together and the bottom two numbers together and simplify where possible. Okay, so j just being very clear, guys, that it's not 
obviously always possible to simplify a fraction, but this is where your knowledge of knowing your factors of numbers will come into play. A sixth divided by two thirds, well, dividing fractions, I keep the first fraction, I flip the second, and then I change it to a times. Okay, so it becomes one sixth times three halves. Okay, let's just put that in a different colour, sorry. Okay, one times three is three, and six times two is twelve. So the answer is three twelfths, which again, it simplifies to one quarter. Okay, so the answer is one quarter. Okay. The next question, adding fractions, well, when I add fractions, I've got to find a common denominator. That's usually found by multiplying the two denominators together, although in some cases that's not always the case. But again, it's about knowing your times tables and your multiples of numbers, okay, when you add fractions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 5 times 5, okay, which is 25, plus... 3 times 6, which is 18. And then that's all over 6 times 5. Okay, so I multiply these two numbers, which is going to be 30. Okay. So essentially, I've cross-multiplied. Okay, I did 5 times 5, which is 25. 6 times 3 is 18. And then it's all divided by 30. Okay. So simplifying this, okay, let's just go on the right here. We're going to get 43 over 30, okay, which is equal to 1 and 13 thirtieths, okay. Because 43 out of 30 is what I call an improper fraction or a top-heavy fraction, okay. And then the mixed number is one whole number and the remainder is thirteenths out of 30, okay, 13 thirtieths. Okay, next question, I'm going to do 8 times 5, which is 40, okay, plus 3 times 7, which is 21, and then that's all divided by the product of the denominators, so 7 times 8, okay, which is going to be 56, okay, 40 plus 21 is going to be 61, out of 56, okay, and again, I can write that as a mixed number, which is 1 and 5 56 or 1 out, sorry, and 1 and 5 out of 56, okay, so that's how to add fractions, I cross multiply, so I did 5 times 8, which is 40, plus 3 times 7, which is 21, and then I multiplied the two bottom numbers to work out the answer for the denominator, okay, it's all about finding a common denominator when you add or subtract fractions, if the denominators are the same, it's nice and easy, just add the whole numbers, okay, or add the numerator, sorry, and keep the denominator the same, and if you subtract, okay, with the same denominators, then I just subtract the numerators together, okay, and leave my denominator as it is, okay. We are now looking at indices expanding and factorising. So question four is looking at simplifying indices using the index laws. Okay, so we're going to, we will start with the first one, guys. X to the power of five times X to the power of three. Now, in maths, if you have the same base, okay, which are these letters or numbers it could be, you add the powers if you're multiplying. So it's going to be X to the power of 5 plus 3, which is 8, okay? So that's the first index law. The X to the power of A times X to the power of B is equal to the X to the A plus B, okay? So write that down, guys, and feel free to make a note of that. Next one, it's got a division using the laws of indices. Now, if I do 16 divided by 4, I get 4. 
y to the 7 divided by y. Now again, if I have the same base and I'm dividing, I subtract the powers. Imagine here I've got a power of 1 here. I do 7 take away 1, which is 6. So it's 4y to the power of 6. Okay, so if I, if I have x to the a divided by x to the b, I do x to the a minus b. Okay. So these indices only work strictly when you have the same base. Okay. Next question. W to the power of zero. Well, anything in maths to the power of zero is always one. Okay. Anything in maths to the power of zero. Okay. Anything. Any letter or number to the power of zero is always one. Next question, I have 3m cubed or to the power of four. Now that's the same as saying 3m cubed times 3m cubed times 3m cubed times 3m cubed. Okay, it looks like a seven there. Okay. Times 3m cubed times 3m cubed, okay? So, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that's going to be 81, and then I'm going to have m to the power of, well, I'm going to have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, it should be a 3 there and not a 4. I have m to the power of 12. Okay, so that's how to work out that one. Question number five, write three to the minus three as a fraction. Well, that negative index means I do one over three to the power of three. So I do one over 27. that question okay this is question number six guys evaluate the following without using the calculator two-fifths all squared so it's two squared which is four five squared which is 25 okay sorry guys if i'm being a bit quiet here it's because of like background noise where i am sorry um yeah i think the sound actually picks up like background noise so i apologize if i'm like dipping my tone in and out and going from low to high so i apologize but hopefully you can still hear me okay 81 to the power of 0 0.5 well power of a half in maths just means a square root so it's a square root of 81 which is 9, okay, it's the positive root of 89, of 81, which is 9, okay, next one, 8 to the power of 2 thirds, well, it's the cube root of 8, and then I square my answer, so it's a cube root of 8, which is 2, and then I raise it to the power of 2, so I do 2 squared, which is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, Okay, so I raise my answer to the power of the numerator. Next one, 81 to the minus half. Well, that minus is the reciprocal, so it flips it. So it's 1 over 81 to the power of a half, which is 1 over the square root of 81, which is equal to a ninth. 1 over 9. Okay, for that one. Okay, question number seven, multiply out the brackets and simplify where possible. I've got double brackets here, so I do x times x, which is x squared. Then I do x times negative five, which is minus five x, plus two x, so that gives me negative three x. And then I do two times minus five, which is minus ten. 
okay? I apologize that I'm doing it in one step, guys, but because of obviously lack of space, it's a bit trickier. But feel free to obviously expand it in full and then simplify where possible. X plus 3 all squared is X plus 3 times X plus 3, which is X squared plus 6X plus 9. Okay, and you can check your answer by expanding the bracket, okay? I do x plus 3 times x plus 3, okay? Each term within the bracket times by the corresponding term in the, in the other bracket, okay? Next one, I'm going to do 3x times x, which is going to be 3x squared, okay? Then I'm going to do 3x times 4, which is 12x. Take away 2x becomes plus 10x, and then I'm going to have take away 8, okay, because minus 2 times positive 4 is minus 8, okay, next question, expanding triple brackets, now this one would have been for higher tiers specifically when you're doing your GCSEs, okay, I'm going to multiply the first two brackets first and then the third bracket, okay, separately, I'm going to do x times x, which is going to be x squared, x times negative 3 is minus 3x, plus 1x becomes minus 2x. And then I'm going to have positive 1 times negative 3, which is going to become negative 3. That's all being times by x plus 2. Okay. So I've got to be very, very, very careful in this section. Okay. I do x squared times x, which is going to be x cubed. Okay. And then I do x squared times 2, which is going to be 2x squared, minus 2x squared, so that's going to cancel, then I'm going to get minus 4x, take away 3x, so I'll get minus 7x, and then I get minus 3 times positive 2, which is going to be minus 6. Okay, again, I have done it in one step, guys, but hopefully you are able to pause it, okay, and triple check by expanding it out in full, okay, if it's not making sense fully, then I would advise to check out my video on how to expand double and single brackets, just to refresh your memory, okay, but I've done this, obviously, assuming that you are happy with expanding brackets, okay, so each, if it's a double bracket, each term is times by the corresponding terms in the other bracket okay once i've expanded i collect like terms so i simplify by collecting like terms okay and then i write my final answer okay if it's a quadratic it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c where a b and c are on coefficients are just numbers okay, whole numbers or even fractions, okay, if it's a cubic, it's in the form of ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where a, b, c and d are numbers, okay, but you expand each term, okay, with the corresponding terms in the other brackets, okay, you then collect like terms and then you simplify where possible, okay, by collecting your like terms, Question number eight, factorize. So factorize the following. Factorize means put into brackets. The first two are a single bracket, so the highest common factor is six. So it's six lots of x plus four. Okay, and you can check by expanding the single bracket. Okay. Next one, the highest common factor of four x and twelve x y is going to be four x. So it's four x brackets one plus three y. Okay, because 4x is the highest common factor between 4x and 12xy, okay, 4 is the highest common factor of 12 and 4, and x and xy, the highest common factor of x and xy is going to be x, okay, because xy means x times y. Okay, the last three are difference of two squares. Factorize n squared plus 9. That's n plus 3 times n minus 3. Okay, and again, you can check your answer by expanding the double bracket. The middle terms, they cancel. Hence, I get the difference of two squares. This one factorising this, I get four brackets, x squared, take away four. 
that's also a difference of two squares. So I get four brackets, x plus two times x minus two. Okay, and that's my final answer. Okay, the last one's a bit more trickier because obviously seven's not a square number, but we write it in the form x plus the square root of seven times x minus the square root of seven. And this is obviously very important because we need to start getting used to factorizing different of two squares where we may have a third, okay? Ever, okay? If it's x squared take away a number, okay, it's always x plus the square root of that number. Sometimes I can take the square root of it, sometimes I can't, okay. So it's getting in the habit of writing things in exact form and we solve um, it appropriately, okay. Of course, root 7 is a third, okay. I don't know the, ex um, the exact um, decimal answer but it doesn't really matter because at this stage it's about writing stuff in exact form okay and simplifying where possible